Hello and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And no week in Sudoku could really be considered complete unless you do a puzzle by Marty Sears. And that is what we're going to be trying to do today, a puzzle called Flurry, which has generated a flurry of recommendations, even though it is, it's only got two stars out of five for difficulty. It features Marty's favourite constraint, the circle, and a rule that we've got to divide the grid into two by four boxes, but the boxes can go um, vertically or horizontally. So we're going to have to work out where the boxes go. It's got a huge approval rating, this, on Logic Masters Germany. Lots of lovely comments. So this is what we're going to have a go at in a moment or two's time. I don't have much news for you today. I'm going to tell you about our Patreon reward available over on Patreon right now. All the fun of the fair. Loads of you have already managed to finish it. Very well done if you're one of those people. If you haven't started it yet, do have a go. You've got until the 20th of January um, to get through it and be in with a chance of winning a prize. And lots of people are saying the puzzles are really good. So that's a little tip for you. Um, then other than that, I've got I've got two lovely birthday messages to do today. Um, I'm going to start off with Liam, actually. Liam, your wife, Alicia, sent us what I'm what might be my favorite photo we've ever been sent on the channel. Um, uh, I know that you have a brand new baby boy, three and a half weeks old, little Alistair. And look at this picture. Um, I mean, uh, they, they, uh, I've heard it said, I've heard it said that, that, that children are the thing that give one the purest joy. And I defy anybody to look at that picture and not just, you know, it almost brings tears to my eyes. It is an absolutely wonderful picture. So Liam, many, many happy returns. Um, I, I, I know that you're enjoying uh, fatherhood and um, I hope that you I hope you're able to get some chocolate cake today um, and I wish you many happy returns also you share a birthday with a young man who's just turned 18 Michael up there in Stockport or not Stockport Southport what am I talking about it's a completely different place and Southport is the home of Southport and Ainsdale golf golf course, um, which is a rather wonderful, wonderful place to play golf. In fact, you, Michael, you're in that you're in a bit of a golfing mecca up there, aren't you? I'm thinking of Lytham. Hoylake isn't that far away either. Um, maybe Birkdale too. Um, anyway, that's, that's by the by. And Michael, you've turned 18 today. I was meant to read this out in the crossword video earlier on, and I might have done that depending on whether I recorded the crossword video, which at the time I'm recording this video, I don't know whether I've managed to do or not. It's all confusing, but your dad, Phil, wrote to us, Michael, and said you'd appreciate, um, a, sh you'd appreciate a shout out. Um, and um, that's what I'm doing. And I gather you're getting chocolate fridge cake today which sounds delicious. It's basically just a lump of chocolate. Uh, that's what Phil said anyway. And But you're only able to have the fridge cake after you've taken your dad to the Roscoe Head Pub in Liverpool so you can buy him the first legal pint you'll ever have bought. <laughs> which all that seems... I'm, I'm not sure if that's in the right, right order, Phil, but uh, it did amuse me. Um, it's a part of the world I'm very fond of. Um, and Michael, I hope you have an absolutely brilliant birthday today. It sounds like uh, it sounds like you will, frankly. And um, yeah, many happy returns from us here on Cracking the Cryptic. Now, let's turn our attention to Flurry and see what the great Marty Sears has in store for us. These are the rules. We've got to divide the grid into eight two by four boxes. Each box should be placed either horizontally or vertically and then fill the grid with the boxes one to eight. Oh, Okay, one to eight, that makes sense. Two by four boxes. One to eight, so that no digit repeats in a row, column, or box. Okay. Uh, a digit in a circle indicates exactly how many circles contain that digit. <laughs> so this is the weird rule, where if that cell is a five, that means that however many circles there are in this puzzle, you've got to put five fives into circles. So it is a very odd rule, but it leads to some magnificent logic. And then digits joined by a small white dot are consecutive. Oh, there's loads of those, look, dotted around the place. So these two digits are consecutive. So if that's one, that would have to be two. Um, 
and not all possible white dots are shown so it's perfectly possible for these two squares to be consecutive with one another just because there's no white dot doesn't preclude that from being the case do have a go the way to play is to click the link under the video as usual but now i get to play let's get cracking and the first thing i've learned to do in circles puzzles is to count the circles so let's do that quickly 10 uh, 14 another 5 19 20 24 i thought i know it's okay so 29 30 35 okay not ah but we're one to eight aren't we today yes all right so we're in one to eight land so the secret is different today and that matters so the secret of sudoku which is something i tell my very favorite people um well it's an adapted secret today and don't worry i'm going to tell you what it is um the secret of this sudoku is that the digits one to eight sum to 36 don't they and that's interesting in the context of circles. So if you think about that, imagine that we put all the digits, all the different digits that exist in this puzzle, the digits one through eight, into a circle in this puzzle. How many circles would there have to be? Well, there'd have to be eight circles with an eight, seven circles with a seven, etc., etc. So there would need to be 36 cir circles, but there aren't, there are 35 circles. So what does that tell us? Well, that tell us, tells us that all of the digits apart from the one must be circled so no ones in this puzzle are circled and that right i can see what that does i can see one thing that does because it's not possible to have a circled one um but all the other digits need to be circled let's look at the bottom right of the grid and ask in which direction it's two by four uh, it's two by four box goes could it go like that well no <laughs> because if, if there was a box in this puzzle that did that every digit in that box would would be a circle digit and therefore the number of circles should add up to 36 and yet it doesn't so in fact we must have a horizontal we must have a horizontal box coming out of this square but also the one in this box and there must be a one in this box somewhere can't be circled so we get a digit for free or well, not for free but nearly for free uh, now look we could let's do some let's do some highlighting of the box there and let's think about what this might mean um, hmm okay well okay i'm going to repeat that trick i suppose i can do it with that that cell as well if that if this was a horizontal box again we'd create we'd create a box of the sudoku that would have complete circlage in it and complete circlage is not what we're looking for so we must have vertical circlage there and now now this this little region must be a horizontal circle um, by by the oh i don't actually like the purple there let's go for green oh that's much better um and now i can outline the regions which is something i always enjoy and i can write one into that box one into this box this is beautiful it's got it's beautiful already so how am i doing this well any box that has must have all the boxes have ones in them the ones must always be uncircled so that places the one here which places the one here now the first thought i'm now having is about twos because this box has got a circle two in it and this box has got a circle two in it and there are only two circle twos in the puzzle so this box this box's two must be uncircled um we can't run that trick with threes can we because we don't know we know we know we've got two circle threes but then there needs to be a third circle three and that could be there or it could be in some other box can't quite see which way <laughs> i mean that's possible i think if it was if it was that that would be a one and that would be a two and that would be a two and that would put a three in as well and that would be a three that would be huge so if i could prove that was the dimensions of the fourth box that we're looking for we'd be in in good shape wouldn't we uh, i can't immediately see how to do that what about okay i'm going to change tack entirely then okay what do we know about eights in the puzzle 
Well, we know that every eight, we know that there's a circled eight somewhere. So there are eight circled eights. And that means every row and column needs to have a circled eight. Well, where is the circled eight in that column? It can only be there, can't it? So that's circled. Now in column one, I can see one of those two cells now must be circled. One of these is circled. Um, let me think. <laughs> um, if this was a region, then we couldn't circle either of those eights. So that would be a circled eight. Oh, right, no, let's just do this differently. How, how could that be horizontal? Go back to my purple color, which I don't really like, but that if, if, that, if that was a, a region, you couldn't put eights or circled eights into those two because you'd have two eights in purple. And then you couldn't have a circled eight at all in row three. So actually that is not a region, which means that this is huge. That means that's a region. It's huge, not only because I can draw it in, but now where is the uncircled one in this region? It's got to be there. Where is the uncircled two in this region? It's got to be there, which means that's a two. This box now has a circled three in it. That box has a circled three. This box has a circled three. That's all the circled threes were allowed. So that's, a, that's an uncircled three. Now we've got loads and loads of circled fours. Green, purple, orange and blue all have circled four. That's the four circled fours. So anywhere else that we have to that we have to draw, um, that we have to draw a, uh, or find a box for, we're going to have to have an uncircled four in that box. Right. Now, okay, this can't be a box now. Sorry, this has actually been available for a while, just didn't see it. But if that was a box, where would its circled eight be? And the answer is nowhere at all. So in fact, there is a circled box there, which will make yellow. That's rather pretty, isn't it? We're making a lovely, a lovely cornucopia, cornucopia of colors here. Uh, so that's got to be an eight in that box. So there's no circled seven in that box. And there's only one uncircled seven in the puzzle. That feels like it's important. Um, how can we do something with that knowledge? Uh, <laughs> um, we probably can do something with that. I just don't know how. Oh, well. I'm going to claim that that is a seven, although I don't know what direction its um, its box goes in. That might be wrong, actually. That might be wrong. I mean, certainly, if that is a box, it's true. If that's if that's a box, there must be a circled seven in this box, which must be there because this is this there's seven circled sevens, and there are eight sevens in the puzzle. So, so the seven in here is uncircled, so every other seven has to be circled. So if, if that was a box, the seven in it would need to be there. But if it was that way, if it was that way, what would that mean? That Could that be a circled seven? And then maybe that could be a circled seven as well. Possibly. Um... Hmm, don't know actually, not sure. Okay, so we've got to do we've got to find some other some other way of thinking about this. And that way is going to be Can we get Oh yeah, in fact, it's, in fact, I'm not going to look up there at all. I'm going to look at that one. If this was vertical like this, let's just draw that in. 
Where would its circled eight be? It couldn't be here. This is really clever. I love the way that the puzzles like this get sort of two stars and you think, oh, well, it must be a total breeze. And although, although so far nothing has been very difficult, it's, it's all, it's, it's got a beautiful flow to it, hasn't it? It's not, I don't think these, this, this is completely trivial. Now, so that's a, that's now a region. So we've got we've got two regions left to find, and um, it's probably going to be something to do with. Uh, no, what I was about to say is total and utter nonsense. So I'm not saying that. I mean, I can see that in this column now. How did I work out one of those was an eight? Yeah, because I need an eight in column one. That makes sense, doesn't it? So this isn't an eight. So one of these is is a, is an eight in column two. Is that helpful? Ah, all right. I'm going to ch change tack again away from sevens. I'm going to think about ones for a moment because yeah, th th this can't be uh, a region. If that's a region, where would the one be in it? And the answer is nowhere. So that so it must be vertical, and then this must be the last the last box. Look, so we've got we found all of our colours, and all we have to do now, all we have to do now, is somehow. Well, this is good actually. This is good because now this is a seven because there can only be one box with an uncircled seven. We've already thought about this. We just couldn't figure it out. So, so there's an uncircled seven in one of these. There's a one in one of those two squares by Sudoku. In fact, no, that's better than that. There's a one, two pair here because we've got one and two in orange and purple, haven't we? And we can't put one and two in any more um, circles. We could never put any ones in circles, and our two twos in circles are in boxes green and green and blue. So this is a one-two pair, and that means that's a three. <laughs> it's really cool. It's really cool. Um, so now seven. Oh, well, could that be seven with a six above it, perhaps? Uh, yeah, maybe. I'm not sure. Um, one is down here. That can't be a one. So one is in one of three places in grey. Could we put? Can we put two here? That would have to be one or three. No. So two is in the same three cells as one is. Um, ah, here's a thought. Is this thought good? It is, it is good. Right, right, of course. <laughs> Marty, clever, clever chap. Right, I'm, I shouldn't just focus on sevens. I should focus on sixes as well, shouldn't I? Because in, in yellow, there is an uncircled six and in gray there's an uncircled six so that's two uncircled sixes of the eight sixes in the puzzle but there, may, there must be six circled sixes so this box has a circled six in it but it also has a circled seven in it so these are a six seven eight triple and that's not eight so this is very big so this digit is five six or seven or oh, it's five or no it's five or seven because the six is here and it's not so, so sorry this is just five am i being very dense there is that right that is five that is six or seven and it can't connect to anything higher sorry yes i am being dense so that's five that's six this is now a seven eight pair that's a four by sudoku so the digits we've not put into this row oh eight i've not put eight in so that's a five oh not five six okay now Every consecutive pair of digits, here is, a, here is a knowledge bomb for you from Cracking the Cryptic. Every consecutive pair of digits has to have an even number. What even number are we going to put 
in this consecutive pair. It can't be two, it can't be six, it can't be four. Sorry, it can't be eight. So it must be four, mustn't it? There must be a four on this dot. And that four goes with three, which would have to be here, or five, which could be in either position. So let's, let's pencil mark that in. That's definitely not three. Okay, that didn't actually do what I was hoping it would do, but never mind, never mind. I still think we're in reasonable shape here. Because presumably in a moment, we're going to think about fives, aren't we? Well, <laughs> the other way we could do this is to start with the low digits. We've already worked out, we've circled all the ones, twos, threes and fours that we're allowed to circle. So what are these squares? Well, they've got to be one, two, three and four. Sorry, that's been totally obvious as well, hasn't it? Um, so these are one, two, three and four. So these, right, those two are now five, six pair due to this five, six pair. So this is a seven and eight pair. And now at the top of this column, we have a three, four pair, I want to say, possible for a three in the corner. Uh, this is not three or four, so this is one or two. That might be helpful. I know there's a four in there, don't I? So this is two or three. Can we keep that going? What do we need in this row? Fours, fives, and sevens. Okay. Um, don't quite know what to do with that. It's interesting, actually. We still very much haven't finished, have we? <laughs> that is true. Um, that white dot looks interesting. Because I can see it can't be very it can't be very low numbers, can it? Ah, in fact, this is this this is more restricted than even I first thought. I could see it couldn't have two on it because that would have broken this square. If this has got two on it, it would be a two three pair breaking this. But what about could it be a three four pair? No, because then both of those digits are two. So this has not got. Yes, okay. So where are two and three? in row seven? That's a good question. Because they're not there and they can't be on this dot. So they are in those squares, which at least gives us a two, three pair, which gives me a one and a four. Uh, hmm, does that do anything? Don't know. <laughs> uh, this can't have eight on it either. Um, so what can this have on it? It could be four, five, maybe. It can't be five, six, and it can't be, so it's either four, five, or it is six, seven. That's annoying. I don't think we know which of those is correct, do we? Okay, let's look at this one then, this white dot. That also can't be a two, three pair. So this is using up some high digits, isn't it? It can't be five, six. That's interesting. So this has got, oh, that's lovely. In fact, that's good. right. So the question I should have asked here is what, um, what odd digit has this got on it? And it can't have one on it. It can't have three on it. It can't have five on it because it can't be five, four or five, six. So it has got seven on it. And if it's got seven on it, that's correcting this one. So this is now not seven, six. And therefore this is four, five, and that's giving me some more digits. So six, five go in. This is now four. That's three, I think. It seems to be by pencil marking what we've got left to place. So this is one, two, six. That three is doing some work. Three and two go in. Oh, hang on, no, I've made a mistake. Why have I put one, two, and six in when I've already got a six in the cage? Sorry. One, two, let's go back. This is one, two, and five. Okay, so we can probably do this, actually. That's one. This is a two, five pair. This is one, this is two, that's two, that's five. Yeah, that's beautiful. 
That is beautiful. That, oh, nearly, I thought I was going to get that, but no. Um, this row, this square, is an 8. Can't be a 7, because we worked out 7 had to be on there. So this must, in fact, therefore, be 6 and 7, mustn't it? Uh, so that means this is 2, 3, which we can do. 2 has to make an appearance in green somewhere. We don't know where it is, but it's definitely one of those squares. And for our next trick, we will... What about this column? 1 and 7. That's a 1, 7 pair. That digit I can work out. That is a 6. This is a 2, 5 pair. The 1, 7 is useful because at the top left we can do that. And... Yeah, we, I think we're still going to need some help from our white dots, actually. I may be wrong, but I think we are. Can we get... Where do we think? Where do we think the easy win is going to be? Is it going to be this one or this one that we focus on? Let's maybe do this one. This can't have 7 on it, can it? Because that would break this digit. And it can't have 3 and it can't have 1. So this definitely has 5 on it, which we can place. And that digit below it is a 4 or a 6. And that 5 is, means this is not a 5. And it's also not 4 by Sudoku. So that's 7, that's 5. That, which means that's 7 in the corner, that's 6. Now this square is a 4 by Sudoku, which means that's a 6. These squares are 4 and 8, and that's not resolved. Bother! So we're still going to need this one. Right, now this one hasn't got 1, 3, or 5 on it, so it's got to have 7 on it, which corrects this digit. So that's 8, that's 7, that's 8, that's 4. This has got to be a 6, 7 pair. Therefore these squares have got to be a 3-something pair, 3, 4 pair. We can do that. 3, 4 go in. Um, yeah, I mean, this that's an 8 by Sudoku. And that's this 7 is very important, actually. It means that's a 6, that's a 6, that's a 7. Oh, I thought that was, I thought that was going to resolve everything. Oh, the, oh no, I'm not going to get a 3 in the corner. I was sure when I penciled out the 3, 4 pair, I was going to get a 3 in the corner, but now I'm not. Ah, you rotten thing. That's three, that's two, that's two, that's five, that's five, that's seven. And hopefully we get five and four at the bottom. It's brilliant. What a brilliant puzzle. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. That is, it's so gorgeous. The flow of that, it's like a sequence of uh, endorphin hits, one after the other. Because there's no, no individual stage is that hard. But the way they all fit together, it's, it is, it was like putting together a really, really enjoyable jigsaw puzzle. It was a flurry of pleasure. Marty Sears, again, take a bow as usual. Um, loved it. Let me know in the comments how you got on. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.